Hello everybody, this is Andreas Ness, business coach. So today I'm talking to Paul Newton from Paul Newton Magic. And guess what? He's a magician. So Paul, thanks for seeing me today. Hello much buddy. Appreciate How are you? It. I'm brilliant. Thank you very much. How good are you? Man. I'm good, thank you. And good. thank you for asking me to come along. You're more than welcome. And I guess Paul being a magician, the first thing that you wanted to do with me is uh, make me vanish, right? Is that uh, right? Yeah, yeah. If you just yeah, stay there, stay yeah. still for a... And here I am, back again. So, uh, <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. We we had to try it. <laughs> yeah, but suddenly, I come back. So, um, yeah. So I just wanted to learn a bit more about your career. Actually, how do you get from what did you do to the beginning to where you are now as a fully blown magician? Okay. Um, well, I've been doing magic since I was a kid. Mm -hmm. So my parents bought me a Paul Daniels magic set, I think it was, when I was a little kid. And I loved it, and I loved that you could make grown adults just suspend reality for a few seconds. Right. Um, and, and I was doing magic all the way, so I was doing gigs for next to nothing at mm -hmm. weekends. <coughs> um, and even into grown adulthood, I was still doing gigs at weekends while I had a job in the weekdays. Yeah. So the last job I had, the last proper job I had, I was working for a company called Thomas International doing psychometrics and psychometric right. profiling yeah. and teaching people about DISC and how to understand others. DISC profiling, yeah. Yeah, and, and I loved it. And yeah. for me, it was almost the perfect job because I was out doing different things. How long things did you do that? Uh, I was with them for four years. Mm. And, and to keep me in a job that long is quite hard work. And you did magic all alongside that? Yes, yeah. So I was doing magic. I'd do, I'd do gigs every other Saturday. It wasn't mm -hmm. a massive focus mm -hmm. because the proper job had my main focus. Yeah. Um, but about 10 years ago, I left Thomas International because my little girl had been born. So my daughter was about six months old and I kind of looked around and I thought, the whole work-life balance thing wasn't right for me. I guess you were traveling quite a lot around the country <coughs> to do those trainings? And yeah, um, you, it was the type of job where I could get a phone call on Sunday evening yeah. saying, Paul, a client's got a problem up north and you need to shoot up to them and stay with right. them for three days. Right. Um, and I turned around to my now wife and I said, look, I can't do this anymore. Right. Something's got to give. <coughs> and I was considering giving up the magic and just working Monday to Friday yeah. and being a dad at weekends. And, and what stopped you from going down this road? My wife. Um, she turned around and she said, well, hold on. You love the magic. Mm -hmm. I don't want you to give up the magic. Mm -hmm. Could we make a serious business out of the magic? She suggested that? Yeah, and she's meant to be the sensible one. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, officially, she's nuts. Oh, right. <laughs> so she's the one that boosted you into the career that you are now, yeah? Uh, yeah, I'll and it, it took a lot of conversation and it took a lot of thought. Um, it took a lot of cutting back on things that yeah. we didn't actually need as well. Because you, you can't just start with a full audience, right? With a full no. order book of, oh, I'm going to present this and this and this. No, when you look back at then, I was, I was probably getting the occasional wedding, mm -hmm. uh, the occasional corporate do. Yeah. Um, now, it's a serious business. So, so how did you start off then? So you, you, you just quit your job and then started to trying to get gigs or...? Do you call them gigs? Is that because I already had a past in entertainment, I I walked away from the job. I already had so many gigs booked in the future anyway. Yeah. Um, I didn't care about the pricing as well so much back then. <coughs> so back then, whenever I did a gig, yeah, it was just extra money. I see. Was nice. Because it was just a little pocket money at the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if it pulled in five hundred pounds over a whole month, yeah, it was just like, extra. So yeah. I, it was lovely to have, and I yeah. wasn't too worried. Yeah. However. When you're walking away from a decent corporate job with yeah. decent pay and car allowance yeah, and yeah. things like that, um, got on my own expense account. Yeah. I miss that sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you walk away from all of that, and then suddenly you go, "Hold on, I've got to, I've got to pull in two to three thousand pounds every month." Yeah. How do I going to do that? Yeah. So now we had some money stacked and, yeah. and in the bank, so we didn't have to worry for about a year. Okay. Well, that's good. Little buffer, isn't it? Exactly. Yeah. So that was the deal. Myself and Catherine said, look, I'll give it a year. If it goes wrong, I'll get another job. You get back to the corporate world? Yeah. But if it works, you actually got a new career? Yes. And that's where we went. Um, so how was the first year? Scary, fun, interesting, massive learning curve. So how did you fill your diary? What would your diary look like? 
At first, it was one, maybe two gigs a month. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, now if you go into my house, I have a mm-hmm. massive whiteboard in the hallway mm-hmm. because this makes my wife happier because she knows what's nice coming in right. and what's happening. Right. <coughs> um, if anyone, if you know anyone that's a sole trader and actually their income matters to their wife and their family or to their husband and their family, yeah. share it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because th- we started Sh- out and for ages. Do you mean share it with your wife, with yeah, your partner? Let them know what's happening. Yeah. Uh, keep them involved. Rather than keep it in and, yeah. and don't share. And, and I found out, it, it was probably towards the end of that first year actually, that almost always my wife was in mild panic. Okay, because there weren't enough gigs on the board? She didn't know oh. what was coming in. Yeah. It was at the end of the first year that we put the whiteboard up on yeah. the hallway. And you created transparency about yeah. what was going on. So, so where did you get the gigs from then? How, what kind of marketing did you do? Uh, really bad at marketing. I was right. awful at marketing. So the main way I got gigs was by being known at gigs. So I'd go out and do a couple of weddings. Yeah. And something that hit me was I need to not only impress people, yeah. but I need to make them remember me yeah. and remember how to contact me. So then I started doing gigs and every gig I'd come up with a trick where I could make my business card appear. Oh, okay. And something lovely that I did, um, actually I've got, I've got a business card on me. This is something that I worked out and is ridiculous. If you're a mind reader, yes. Um, so I've got my business card, you've got the front of my business card there. Yep. And on the back, that little grey bar there, yep. it's not only lovely design, that's where I write predictions. Right, okay. So I could literally do a trick with you, say I'm doing some mind reading. You want to do it? I could, uh, not... Not this one? Not this one. Okay. Can we try something else? Try something else. Um, But that used to mean people would walk away from a trick with With something they're going to keep because it was the actual trick. And it had their numbers on the back. It had their numbers on it, it had their word if they're thinking of balloon, I've written balloon across there. Brilliant. And just something that simple. And you still do that? I still do that. Still that. I still love that trick. And is it a great generator of additional business? Yes. Does because people have a reason to keep hold of it. That's right. Because How it's many personal. times do you get a business card yeah. and you don't want to keep hold of it just because oh, yeah. I'll never need them? But this has my personal that has, dates on it. You will pick the five of yeah. spades on it. Great, isn't it? It is. We take the business card and... In really bad handwriting, I could be a doctor if you look at my handwriting. You want to hold it to the camera? No, No, they can wait until. Okay, they can wait until find out. Oh, I see. Okay. So this is one of the the simplest magician's tricks that you can get. You literally, I'm going to run my thumb down there. You're going to say stop. Yeah. I'll stop exactly where you say. I'll even check you're happy with where we stop. Yeah. That'd be fun. We'll go again. Ready? Mm. Stop. There. Mm. Happy with that? Yeah. Sure. Super happy. We'll cut the cards where you've said. We put the bottom of the deck there. Yeah. I straighten up the top and I'll show you that. Yeah. Now, I'm going to, I purposely look away and uh, so that show people can see yeah. it as well. Got it? Yeah. Turn it down so I don't get to look and I do that. Yeah. Two reasons I do that. Number one, we know your card is at the bottom of the top yep. deck. Number two, when I finish, you can check the whole deck and make sure it's normal. Okay. Okay. Now this is the psychology bit. This is reading someone. So you and I both know there's only two color choices. Yeah. So your card must be red or black. Yeah. Brilliant. Slight nose point towards red. I'll go for red. Okay. Now, if I think it's red, that means I've got two choices again on the suit. Yeah. So we've got hearts and we've got diamonds. Brilliant. Oh, eyebrows going up towards hearts. Yeah. Now we'll go for a heart. <coughs> now it's the value, the number or the picture, and I'm going to run through all of them. Yep. Okay? Don't say anything, don't do anything. Poker face. Ready? Ace, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, jack, queen, king. Oh, it's near the middle. It's a bit later than the middle. I'm going to go for the eight of hearts. How's that? Well, that's spot on. See, and That's what it is. Show that. You can make sure people can see it's a normal deck. Wow. And that's my prediction. Wow, impressive. That kind of stuff. I love that. I love that. And that's a normal deck of cards. Yeah, yeah that's not have a, a look at them. Deck of um, cards. It's, uh, oh, wow. 
and I normally give whatever deck I'm using away because right. I see a lot of magicians who have faked decks. Right. Um, and I don't like that. No. Well, just well, 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 thanks for sharing a trick. That's the first Sorry. one in our interview. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Expect Rob. more if it, if it doesn't annoy you too much. So, um, so going back to your first year and your marketing, where you did yep. the card trick, which is a great idea for marketing. Oh, uh, yeah. Right. What, so, what else did you do then to attract more walks business? Walks into venues. Right. So, like with, for example, what with kind of magic, menu? you know you want to hit weddings, mm -hmm. you want to get corporate dues. Yeah. So, I would walk into venues that did that. Yeah. So, uh, if you're going for. Um, like big hotels and stuff like that? Yeah, but the nice ones. Yeah. So, right now we're in Portsmouth. We're yeah. We're near Portsmouth. Yeah. Um, so, you've got New Place, not yeah. far from here, Wickham. Yeah. Uh, gorgeous venue. Yeah. And I do weddings there. All right. Um, you've got the Solent. And you just offered yourself as an extra... Literally walked into traction to a load of them. venues, huh? asked to meet their wedding coordinators, yeah. did some tricks for them, got remembered by them. Good. Now, not every single venue went, yes, we want you. Yeah. But I would say about 50% of them went, so half we've of got a wedding fair coming on. Ooh, that's good. to that. That's good. That's good. So you yeah. performed at the wedding fair, yeah? Go to a wedding fair, do tricks, make sure you get your cards out. You walk around and go to couples and go, have you checked this out? And, oh, yeah. That's good. And just make them think about it. Because what I do, it's, it's not about how I do the trick. Mm -hmm. That doesn't matter to the buyer. Yeah. What matters is that feeling of, oh my word, how yeah. did that happen? Yeah. What matters is I get people laughing. Yeah. I get people talking. Yeah. So you think of a wedding, yeah. you've got three different groups. You've got the bride's family, the yeah. groom's family, the yeah. mutual friends, and they don't talk to each other. Right. Whereas you get some idiot like me going, right, let's get you, and yeah. you, and, you and we'll do a trick on, on you. And they start laughing. They yeah. buy each other a drink. And so they start bonding. Brilliant idea. This exactly. is really good. This and is it. I'm a really, really expensive icebreaker. Yeah. Well... <laughs> <laughs> well yeah, which, 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 you know, was one of the other points, I think, when we previously talked, you said, you know, you, you have your price. Yep. You said at the beginning of the interview, you, you weren't, your pricing was that of a leisure, a hobby, right, when you did it at the weekends, but then when you made it your job, obviously that had to change. And how did that change? Different mindset completely, isn't it? So, so how, did, how did that change? Um, do you know what? It was in my head. Mm -hmm. So beforehand, it wasn't so much a value buy it was more of a oh they'll only buy me if they like it if they want it if it's it's an extra nice to have at the wedding I see so so thinking you were just <coughs> you were just an extra yeah not the main attraction that's what my mindset used to be right whereas now the mindset is hold on this is a day that people spend twenty thousand pounds on yeah easily if you buy a bog standard entertainer mm -hmm. that's what you'll get yeah. bog standard entertainment yeah. that people will go that's nice yeah if you want an entertainer that everyone goes yeah how was that even possible yeah an entertainer that will get the bride and groom involved mm -hmm. and have people talking about a trick that i did on them yeah. for years yeah that's what you get when you hire me it's that extra layer of wow yeah and you know it should be the most magical day ever Absolutely. And I help it along. Yeah. Um, th th one of my favorite tricks, and if, if you're on YouTube, mm -hmm. ju just go on there, look for Paul Newton Magic, and yeah. Feather Trick. Okay? Right. If you look at that, basically, I get the bride and groom mm -hmm. in a stage-type show yeah. to read each other's minds. Right. Actually, you've seen me do that at 4 yes. haven't yeah, you? Yeah, I did, yeah, I did. And it, it works. It and it's does. beautiful. It's a great trick. And around a, the day of a wedding, yeah. the story behind it is lovely. Because we've got two people who have bonded together, yeah. and let's see if their minds have bonded as well, and see if they can read each other. And just by coincidence, they are. Yeah. It's brilliant, yeah? It's a win-win, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, it works. So did you manage in the first year then to, to pull it off and to create, a, to create a business that was enough to feed you and your family? <coughs> now... Um, this goes back into, we had to cut down on things. Yeah. So we did. We cut down our lifestyle. And do you know what? I think our lifestyle now is worth so much more. Yeah. Because I have more time with my wife and with my daughter. Yeah. And more time being dad. The money stuff, we cut down. 
So your work-life balance is at a much happier place than it was when you worked for was yeah. it Thomson International? Thomas. Thomas. Yeah. Thomas. Um, yeah, and and seriously, uh, uh, no disrespect to Thomas International, it's the best job I've ever had. Yeah. But I'm now a part-time magician yeah. and a full-time dad. Right. And that's the way you want it. Yeah. So for you, it's a perfect life-work balance. Yep. Great. And I don't know about you, but I think a lot of people, especially in Britain, mm -hmm. get it the wrong way around. Yeah. You're probably right. So what would you say was, you know, looking back, what would you say was your biggest challenge that you overcame? Biggest or challenge? The amount of times mm -hmm. I was told it wouldn't work. The negativity of people? Yeah. And, okay. and, and do you know what? It often comes from people that really care. Mm -hmm. It normally comes from people who, who don't want to see you get hurt. Yeah. <clears throat> but when you've got, I hate using the word dream. I, mm -hmm. I think it's been too Americanized. Yeah. But I know that you get this. Mm -hmm. When you've got a dream of how you want your life to be, yeah. you can't follow somebody else's path. No. So me knowing that actually I can earn a decent wage being a magician mm -hmm. is very different to my buddy who's always wanted to work in an office. Yeah. And so, how did you overcome that? Did you just have that strong belief that you can make it, no matter oh, what people say? Yeah, how did sheer you? arrogance. Right. I mean, and determination, just, I guess. Yeah. yeah. And, and the backup of my wife was amazing. So without your wife, you probably not gonna, wouldn't be here? Nope. Right. And that nope, you'd still be working at? Honestly, Paul Newton Magic is a two-person business. Yeah. Um, if she wasn't there covering my backside and kicking me when I need it, yeah. uh, none of this would have happened. So she was your coach almost, wasn't she? Yeah, yeah. That's great. And it, it, and and Kat is so different to me. She's very quiet. She's mm -hmm. quite shy. Uh, you will never see her in front of a camera. No. Um, if I get invited to uh, gala dinners and yeah. balls and things like that, yeah. she would happily say, Paul, you go. Yeah. I'll, I'll be at home watching a period drama. Well, Paul, it's been uh, magical. <laughs> but thank, thank you, you very, very much, much for your time, yeah. And the best of luck with your performance, uh, you know, at the um, Mayfair, was it May Mayfair? Uh, uh, Nuffield. Nuffield. Nuffield, I think. Nothing to me, okay. Where, wherever it is, where we can see in October. Yes, right? 3rd okay. of October, fingers crossed, Nuffield yeah. Theatre. Yeah. And for you guys out there, the learning that I got from that is that always remember that when you start looking at your dreams and fulfilling your dreams, and when people tell you you can't do that, you realize suddenly everybody around you becomes an expert in what you want to do. And usually they're not, and they give you not the advice you want. So do what Paul did and just go for it. And sheer tenacity and determination will get you where you want to be. But keep going at it. That's it for this week. Thank you very much. Speak to you soon. Bye-bye.